You don't know what tools you need. You don't know what kind of team members you need on your team because multifamily is a team sport. Hello and welcome. My name is Gino Barbaro, one of the co-founders of Jake and Gino. And in this how-to video, we're going to be discussing the top research tools for multifamily investors and even for syndicators. But I just want to make this generalized for investors in multifamily. And this is really important because when you're starting out, it can be challenging. You don't know what tools you need. You don't know what kind of team members you need on your team because multifamily is a team sport. So let's dive in here. First thing, if you're syndicating deals and you're starting to raise capital, you need a platform and investor management platform. Now, when I started, they were few and far between. I think the only one that was really around was, was CrowdStreet. That was the only one that was around years ago. There might've been other ones, maybe Syndication Pro, but there were very few. And as syndication became more and more prevalent and more people have been raising capital, there've been a lot of platforms. Now, the one that we like to use, Perry Zhang, Cashflow Portal. If you want a connection to Perry to speak to him personally, just email me, Gino at jakeandgino.com, and I will send that information along. I'll connect with Perry. What I like about his platform, it's easy. Two jabronis like Jake and Gino can use the platform with ease. They also have a thing on the platform that I like that if you are a co-GP, you're not the lead sponsor, you have your own area where you can log in and it looks as if it's only your investors. You're not co-mingling investors with the lead GP and a co-GP, which is really an amazing function. You, you have your own site, your investors see you, they don't see anything else, and it's so seamless. The platform is beautiful, it's done really nicely. I like everything that's internal, <clears throat> and they keep constantly upgrading, putting new upgrades into platforms. So that's the first thing. If you're gonna start syndicating deals, I would say take a look. And they're very reasonable, they're very affordable. They charge with assets under management, with equity under management. That's what I like about it. I remember when we started out, the price point was very expensive because there wasn't that much competition. So go check out Cashflow Portal. I love them. The second one, if you're just starting out, you're going to need some, some type of CRM. Now, CRM basically stands for Customer Relationship Management Tool. You can start out with something as simple as Google Docs or Google Sheets. That's what Jake and I started out with originally. Then from there, we use a platform called Active Campaign. Active Campaign is really good for sales, but for us, we liked it because it gave us the ability to create automations, it gave us the ability to create customer journeys within it, and we were able to collect all the information. When you're starting out, at the very least, get a Google Doc, put the investor's name, put the date you contacted them, put their contact information. Are they going to invest with you? Yes, no. Last time you reached out. The reason why I like the CRMs, it automates a lot of the stuff. And I like it because you can create email automations when you reached out, when you touched out. And it also creates the ability to say to them that, hey, you've spoken to them. You can put notes in these CRMs to make sure that you have that substantive relationship. So I think CRMs are so important. But if you're just starting out, at least start documenting things on a Google Doc. And then when you get the CRM, go on there. There's so many different types, so many different kinds of CRMs. Just Google it. Like I said, we like to use Active Campaign. But after you do your first or second one, you're absolutely going to need some type of CRM. Now, the third one, this is another mistake that Jake and I made starting out. We used a really inexpensive and crappy property management software. Remember, 10 years ago, things were a little bit different. And we weren't big enough to use Yardi. We weren't big enough to use uh, Appfolio at the time. I think we were using a company called Renpost. And when we got to 500 units, it was just a nightmare. Their software was terrible. We didn't have proper reporting and we just couldn't scale. And at that point, we decided to bite the bullet and use Appfolio. And it's been a, an amazing transformation and transition for us over the last several years utilizing them. They've got a great platform. Now, if you're just starting out, they may not be the resource or the solution for you. There's other companies out there. I mean, there's companies like Buildium, they have Yardy Breeze out there. There's so many different companies. Just Google property management software. There's also another company that some of the Jake and Gino members use called Doorloop. They may be another great platform for you, but make sure you have some type of property management software because at the click of a button, you can generate reports. If you can't measure it, then you can't manage it. And that's what was happening to us. Once you get to over 100 units, you have two or three properties, it's very difficult. And especially if you have investors or you wanna refinance a property or you wanna sell a property, it's so simple. At the top of touch of a button, you can generate a T12. You can generate reports. The old way of doing it, 
using QuickBooks and all, it works until it doesn't work. Listen, when we started investing, I remember it was our first deal. It was a 25 unit deal. I started with QuickBooks. It, it worked. But then after we bought our second deal three months later, we had 60 units, two different, quick, two different QuickBooks accounts. It just wasn't producing the proper reports. We couldn't do maintenance requests on there. It was just difficult. So what I would say to you is go check out the other resources. Like I said, Buildium, Dorloop. And if you're on the 100 unit level, look at Appfolio. Now this next one, this is important. A deal underwriting template. I don't care what template you use, just make sure you use a template that you feel comfortable with. There are a lot of templates out there. The Jake and Gino community, we just created a template to utilize, to be able to underwrite. You want something that's not so complex that it's gonna take you hours to underwrite and at the same time, give you accurate information. So just pick one. There's so many out there, but you're going to need one. You're gonna to need to get comfortable with one. And more importantly, you're gonna want a tool that you can utilize, that you can do something called back of the napkin. So if you get a deal in, you don't wanna spend three hours on a deal to underwrite only to find out that the deal doesn't work. You wanna be able to create some type of back of the napkin numbers where you do a quick underwriting. Deal makes sense, it looks pretty good. All right, let me go forward and let me underwrite, underwrite this deal in more depth. So it's really important that you pick an underwriting template. Now this next one may seem pretty obvious, but Zoom, <clears throat> Zoom webinars are really good. I was using GoToWebinar when we first started out. It was a little bit more expensive. I just did not like the software. It just felt clunky. Zoom came out, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe a few years ago, they came out with the Zoom webinar and then we just decided to transfer over and use Zoom webinar. When you're hosting webinars to raise capital, it's a great platform to utilize. It looks professional, you can answer questions, you can bring people in. And if you don't wanna use Zoom webinar, you wanna just do regular, do a regular Zoom meeting, you can do that as well. But you're going to need a, a platform like Zoom to be able to hold these meetings. Now. As you're going through all this and you listen to me, I wanted to offer you something that a lot of our community members use, and I've been getting a lot of really great feedback from it. Remember the property management software, those property logs. We have a document that we use called the property log document. If you've got a property, you want to have information specific to that property. How old the property is, the last time you power washed, who the electric providers are on the property, when's the last time you cleaned out the gutters. That's what this property log does. So it's really important, a great resource as an investor, as an asset manager, and to be able to hold your third party property management accountable to have this property log. So if you want the property log, email me, gino at jakeandgino.com, and I'd love to send you that property log that we use. Now, this next one. Canva. Canva is a great resource. When you're starting out and you want to create a bio or a one pager, we use Canva. Nice basic headshot. And in our one pager, we have our partners, me, Jake, and my partner, Mike on there. We have a short bio of each of us. Then we have our framework, our buy right, finance right, manage right. It's a business plan on this one pager. And we list our assets. Canva is an amazing resource. It's actually pretty inexpensive. I think we just re-upped it. I saw the bill come through. I think it was 120 bucks for the year. And it allows you, for someone who is challenged with doing PowerPoints and doing all types of and that is not my strong suit. Even I can use Canva. So go out and take a look at Canva. Calendly would be the next resource that you need. You want to be able to schedule, have a calendar link to be able to schedule these investor calls, to be able to schedule anything that you need, block out a couple hours a day, send out that calendar link. Calendly works really, really well for us. Now, this next one would be CoStar. You're looking at some type of research company. It would be CoStar, Crexy. Reonomy, PropStream. If you're really looking to find owners, addresses, you're going to have to invest some money early on. You know, the best way to do it would be really to network with all the brokers. But if you're starting out, you may have to pay for this. And we did early on. We had a, a subscription with Reonomy. Jake and Gino members had that three or four years ago. Don't know how that platform is now. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to get owner's information. You're trying to get how long the owners have held the property. How much, you know, who's the debt, who are the debt holders? Important information about the property itself, possibly the owner's phone numbers that you can contact them. And platforms like that do that. Now, that's not something that you need right away, but if you haven't connected with brokers and you're not on their lists and you're trying to find out the assets in the market, CoStar, once again, Crexy, 
Reonomy, PropStream, those are really good. This last one that I want to discuss is virtual tours. Now, this is something that we've started implementing I mean, since COVID, but it's really amazing. We're virtual staging units right now because we have so many different unit mixes. So what we're trying to do is go through our entire portfolio of properties and go through every unit mix that there is and virtually stage it. It is so cool to see something like that because it's really taking time going into the unit, being able to photograph it, but then staging it virtually with with furniture that's not there. Matterport is a really great solution to use. Just Google Matterport. You probably see them a lot of multifamily websites where you're listing apartments. They do 3D renderings. You can go so far as that. Depending on the on the style of property, if you got to see affordable housing style property, you may not have to go to that extreme, but a lot of these nicer assets are using Matterport. And one thing I would say with virtual staging, possibly start doing virtual tours. If you have, you know, a YouTube page, we need to do this right after COVID because if you remember, everything was shut down, but we were essential. But a lot of people didn't want to come look at properties and they didn't want to tour properties. So what we did is we just got a camera, we went into units, we just videoed the unit itself, edited it, put a little bit of music, put it up on our YouTube page. So every time a prospect wanted to see the property, you just send them the YouTube link. Bam, that YouTube link will show the property itself. And if they're interested, they come in and do a tour. If not, you have eliminated what, a good hour or two out of that property manager's day to not have to waste time. So take property tours and the virtual staging really seriously. Maybe make that a priority this year because it's all about operations this year. I've seen a lot of operators get into trouble because of finance, right? Because they're not having financed their properties properly. That's all well and good but we also have to start executing on what we have right now. So start executing by managing right and using these tools. Now, let me also offer you this. We have a moving guide handbook that we utilize. If you want a copy of that, take a look at it. Once you see it, you're like, oh, this is a great resource to be able to give residents when they're moving in and when they're moving out. If you want a copy of our moving handbook, just email me once again, gino at jakeandgino.com, and I love to send it over to you. Now, final thoughts. When you're getting all of these resources, what I want you to think of is multifamily is a team sport. You can't do it yourself. You're going to need to build up your vendors. You're going to need to build up your, your you know, people you're working with. And what I would put at the top, if you're doing, you know, managing and you're looking at multifamily specifically property management companies and real estate brokers are at the top and then once you start syndicating i would also look at that property management software those are the three things that you need to be focusing on your business listen i want to thank you for listening to this how-to i want to thank you for spending some time today with me going over this because this is so important this is about your business this is about building an enduring organization and these are the tools that are going to help you building that organization that's going to endure and that's going to last. I want you to think of becoming better. Don't worry about becoming bigger. If you worry about becoming better at what your craft is, naturally, ultimately, you will become bigger. Thanks for listening, and I will see you on next week's How To. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode. 